Oh, there you are. Um, wow, where has the time gone by? Uh, well, for example, it's Friday. I'm having some little Caesars. I did a review of this one. I want a food review. Pepperoni, uh, pe the pepper pretzel crust pizza. Highly recommended by Stevie Breach. Just digging in into it. Enough with food, enough with that. Survivor Series. The what, well, because I'm Canadian, so I had Thanksgiving about a month ago. But for the rest of you Americans, Thanksgiving is next week. And with that, the weekly Thanksgiving tradition starts on Sunday with Survivor Series Live from St. Louis, Missouri. This is probably one of the biggest dealt pay-per-views in a while because of what's at stake. Apart from SummerSlam, it's like United Champions, Hell in a Cell, not really much. But they've got, I'm going to get into that match later, but yeah, let's, let's drown. Well, I don't want, i got to say the right expression. Let's get this thing started. You've got Fandango going up against someone that's to be determined. Um, I don't know why they're doing that, but they are. And yeah, I find it a little odd. A little oddball, yeah. Fandango with, I'll read it right here, with Rosa Mendez versus To Be Announced. Who are they going to have out and come face them? I don't know. I don't really care. Is that match? Let's get that one. Like, I don't mind going there. That's me stupid. But Bad News Barrett's back. I'm happy about that. Hopefully he wrestles Fandango because apparently the revolution is character. Uh, first match I want to go over is a simple one. It is the 8 Diva Tag... Not 8 Diva. The 8 Diva Elimination Match. They always do this every year for the last little while. They just grab the girls because they realize they're not doing anything well. Okay, we're going to put the heels in this corner. The faces here. The heels being Cameron, Layla, Summer Rae, and Paige. Versus Natalia, Naomi. Who was the other one? Natalia, Naomi, Emma. And who in that? Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox. That's right. Um, I'm going to go with the... Heel Diva Tag Team, just because Paige is probably the biggest star in this match, and there's not much else you can do with this, because in all seriousness, that's an 8 Diva Tag match. Like, when you say this is the bathroom break, this literally is the bathroom break. This is a match that no one's going to care about. This is a match that no one really wants to see. This is a match that's going to be probably filler before the main event goes out, to be honest with you. Um, up next, we've got, I don't know why I went that close in, we've got, uh, the Divas, I'm just going to do the girls' matches right away, because it's just like, boom, knock them out of the park. And then next up, we've got the Divas' champion match with, uh, Nikki Bella versus AJ Lee with Brie Bella. Still, like, I think she's got, like, three more days left being her slave, and then that's it. Uh, but you got those two in the corner there. This one, I'm going to give it to Nikki, I'm going to go heel again. For the simple reason of that, because even though it's there, you can do, now that Bella's Bree's going to be free of uh, Bree's slavery, you can have those two feud, and you can also probably throw AJ Lee in the mix there, so you can have it like Lee versus Bella versus Bella, and then you can go in there, just have the two of them do that, because you want to have Nikki be that bitch character. You want to have Nikki be that character. She thinks she's the queen of the world. You want her to feel like Stephanie McMahon. You want her to feel like nothing can stop me, nothing's getting in my way. Boom. It's just that simple. Yeah, so Nikki Bella, and then hopefully it leads to that view. They have the rematch, and then you can have Brie say, hey, I'm not your slave anymore. Hit her with a nice thing, and at TLC, have those two buckheads. Um, up next, we've got the four-way tag match. This is a, probably one of the underrated matches on the, well, the five announced matches. This is one of the matches that could actually steal the show because every time they do these matches, they always go out there and they kill it. You've got Los Matadores. You've got the Usos. You've got the Champions, Miz, um, Gold and Stardust. You've got Miz Dows. You've got Miz and Miz Dow. Simple. I want to go with them winning. Why? Because the Gold and Stardust character is starting to fade a little bit. Because like, there's not much they can do anymore. Because they make themselves look like those... They make To me, they look like those weird clowns that... Oh yeah, they think they're good, but really they're heel. And like, there's no nothing much else to them. It's like, whatever. Cody Rhodes plays the gimmick well. He does his thing. Got that. But apart from that as well... Yeah, you got Cody being Cody. 
But Damian, Damian Sandow, Damian Mizdow, and The Miz are probably the hardest thing going for WWE right now as it comes to tag teams. Why? Because um, they can work well together. The crowd loves Mizdow. If you know me, if you don't know by now, I'm a huge Damian Sandow fan. So it just adds up for everything. It just makes for great chemistry. That's why I want them to win the tag titles, just because it's simple. It's simple. Um... I also do predict with this match there's going to be at least 10 suicide dives, seeing that every tag match there has to be at least 5. I'm going to double that number. Yeah. All right, up next, this is a match that really intrigues me. This is a reason why it's like, okay, they, they can go out there and steal a show. This is Dean Ambrose. This is Bray Wyatt. This is just a single one count, one fall match. Single. Scheduled for one fall. You've got basically these two guys in the corners. They've got such a good rivalry going because they're basically the same character. They're that little bit of weird. They're that little bit of cuckoo. But one's a face and one's a heel. With that being said, God, this is a tough one. Ah, oh. He hasn't won in a while. i got to go with the lunatic. Yeah. Why? Because they've had Bray Wyatt come out and say the whole... Because Bray Wyatt cost him the match at Hell in a Cell. Bray Wyatt and Sister Abigail him to the wall on SmackDown last Friday night. And Bray Wyatt done that whole, like, your father's locked up in prison thing, which is kind of oddball. Like, why didn't they go in there? Which I don't really understand. But, hey, get some views, get some views. But, yeah, this is a match I feel that is one of those ones people are really excited for. It's one of those reasons why people can tune in for the thing. Like, this could be match of the night right here. Yeah. And everything else is looking good. Yeah, um, I want to get into the main event now, which is going to be the, uh, you know it's the main event, Team Cena, Team Authority, and if you haven't already noticed, rocking my, one of the Team Cena members' shirts today, no one thought this was a WWE shirt, they were like, where did you get it, I was like, WWEshop.com, yeah, and then, uh, so with this match, you got Team Cena, which you got Cena, you got this guy right here. You've got Big Show. You got Ryback. You got Eric Rowan, which is really the wild card in this whole thing. And you got Mr. Cena. And with this match, and then you got the authority. You got Seth Rollins. You got Kane. You got Mark Henry. You got Rusev. And you got Luke Harper. Same thing. Harper is the IC champ now, so I don't know where they're going to go with this. Because honestly... They basically grabbed the guys who weren't being used. Like, why is Mark Henry... That's why Mark Henry and Big Show on the team. They're like, all right, they just broke up. Grab them. You put them each on one team. Ziggler's understandable. Uh, Big Show is... Uh, whatever. Ryback, meh. Uh, even though his bag is good. Cena, well, Cena's captain. And Rowan's the wild card because they don't really have much to do with him. Because he's about to become a comedy act. And then they just said, throw him in there just to keep him more relevant. I gotta go with Team Cena with all the stipulation stuff, especially what happened Monday. Even though Triple H went through a table, you still had Dolph Ziggler get the crap beaten out of him, and then he had this title loss. You had, well, Bit when Sheamus was still on the team with Big Show, you had the two of them get the crap beaten out of them. You have all this stuff tonight leading to the whole the authority fired angle, because honestly, everyone's tired of this stale angle where it's like, oh, best for business, they just keep bringing new guys on. The security thing is incredibly stupid with Mercury and Noble. Uh, it's just run its course, and honestly, why? Because those, they're going. Because then from there they can build matches. They can still have them heels. You can still have Seth Rollins go out there with the money in the bank. That's why his thing is saved. Rusev's got the title. That's his thing. Ro Harper's got the title. That's his thing. What's gonna happen, to Eric? What's gonna happen to um, Kane and Mark Henry after this match? They lose. But. Yeah, I basically, and even the whole thing, oh, they're going to get all get fired. There's no point in doing that angle, so it's all leading to the point of the authority losing. It's just, where are we going to go from here? But, yeah, no, I'm picking Team Cena to win, probably. There's a lot more people that are picking Team Cena to win. Uh, I feel like it's got to be John, though. If they do win, john got to be the one to get a pinfall. Why? Because it's his team. It's his, He's the captain. Team's on his back. He's got all that. So that's why I feel like if this match were to have that, Cena has to get that last pinfall. But the other thing I hope for Sunday is too that St. Louis comes ready. And I want to talk about Randy Orton, but 
I don't know where they would fit him in unless they have the only thing they have to say is that if Randy or the one person I'd have to say if this guy right here, Ziggler, would get taken out backstage, like, oh my god, Dolph, 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 they're scrambling to find a teammate before the match, boom, voices hits. That's the only way I can see Orton being equipped put into this pay per view. Apart from that, you can keep him off TV and then bring him back to TLC. And then if the authority does lose, have him and go up against Rollins and have their little rivalry go because they actually perform well together. But I'll see you guys in the next video and uh, have fun watching Survivor Series.